All right. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this class today on uh, church and ministry administration. Uh, let's take a moment just to pray and uh, we will get started. And uh, one of us just pray together. Um, here, could you please lead us in prayer? Yes, sir. Father God, we just come before your throne, Father God. Father God, thanking you for the day. Thanking you for class. Thanking you, sir. I know the student, Father God. Father God, lead us to your kingdom work, Father God. Father God, whatever we are going to learn, Father God, the subject, Father God. Help us to understand all things, Father God, and apply to your kingdom work. Thanking you, Father God. And upcoming time, I'm just submitting to your hand, Father God. Take care of every side. Thanking you, Father God. Almighty Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Okay, so in uh, uh, in this in our course on uh, church and uh, ministry administration, last week we did a short uh, session on um, the legal side of things. You know, just just shared a few thoughts there today. Uh, we will get into a new area, which is on uh, planning, uh, e execution, and coordination. And uh, I'll just start this off today, and we probably will spend you know maybe uh, two or maybe even three lectures on on this. Um, the the reason uh, this this particular part of uh, church and ministry administration is important is because uh, a lot of the work that we would do as a church, uh, as a Christian ministry, you know, uh, whether it could be, you know, in, in specific areas of the ministries or having conferences, doing mission trips, um, we undertake special projects, other events, things that we do, uh, all of these things require planning uh, if we are going to do them well and um, and so uh, I thought um, just to uh, help us think through on you know how do you plan and then how do you execute a project right uh, what goes into it um, is something important for us because uh, uh, in, in, as a church as a local church or as a Christian ministry this thing is going to keep on happening over and over again every year and um, uh, many of the ministries we do will require a, a lot of planning, coordination, execution. Uh, even if you want to have a conference, let's say, you know, a men's conference or a, a Christian le leaders conference. Sometimes you um, have to start planning many, many months in advance. Mm. And then uh, you, know, you have to plan it out, you do execute it and then you try to learn from uh, the experience so that the next time you do the same conference or a similar conference you can do it better so uh, the reality is in christian ministry or in church ministry um, there's a lot of planning uh, uh, that that is required now however you know uh, there is a challenge because some of us, you know, are very open to the idea of planning and execution, planning and, you know, execution and doing things as projects. But the, uh, there are some who would object to things like this and uh, from a biblical perspective, you know, um, for example, when you look at certain scriptures and uh, if you have your Bibles, you can look at it with me in uh, Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses 25 to 34. You know, Jesus said, don't worry about what you're going to eat or drink or what you're going to put on. You know, life is more than your food and your clothing. Uh, in verse 26, Jesus said, you know, look at the birds of the air. Uh, they don't store anything in the barns and... Now, yet Father feeds them, 
uh, you're of more value than them. You know, think about, you know, who can, you know, who can add even one small inch to your height by worrying. Uh, verse 28, he says, you know, why do you worry about clothes? Uh, look at the lilies of the field, how they're growing so beautifully, but they don't even toil or spin. They don't, they don't make any clothes for themselves. But, you know, even Solomon was not as, you know, um, uh, uh, beautiful or grand in, in his clothing. Verse 30, you see, God clothes, clothes the grass of the field. It's there today. It's thrown in the thrown in the oven. So uh, why are you being uh, having so little faith? Why are you worrying? What you're going to eat or drink or wear? And this is how the Gentiles live. Verse thirty-two. Your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. So you know sometimes people may use this passage and say, "Why are you planning? Just just go ahead, just do it." And you know, at the when things have what whatever has to happen will happen, and uh, you know things. So ministry. It just happens all spontaneously and so on. Some people uh, are, 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 you know, um, are uh, averse to planning and proper execution. So on. another passage that um, people may use is from James chapter 4, uh, verses 13 to 17. So if you have your Bible, uh, you can turn there, please. James 4. Uh, 13 to 17. Uh, could somebody read that? James 4, 13 to 17. So now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is a sin for them. Mm. So, you know, people may use this passage as well and say, hey, you know, why are you worried about one year from now? You know, so uh, sometimes uh, a conference can be one year from now and we start planning for it and, you know, start working towards it. And people say, why are you even thinking like that? Look, the Bible says you don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. Life is like a mist. It's just here and it's gone. Uh, why are you making this plan that you're going to have this conference, you know, sometimes one year from now, two years from now, we start planning. Um, and uh, why all this, you know? And uh, you, if it's going to, if it's a lot, well, it'll happen. It'll all come together. So people can use, you know, a passage from Matthew 6 or James 4 uh, to say there's no need to plan. There's no need to worry about those things. Yet, in the same Bible, if you turn with me to Proverbs chapter 6, you also find this in the Bible. Proverbs 6, and, uh, you know, somebody could read for us 6 through 11, please. Proverbs 6, 6 through 11, somebody could read that. Go to the ends, this lover. Consider its way and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, Miss Lugger? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. So here in Proverbs 6, he's saying, go look at the ant. And one of the things uh, he's saying is, look, the ant is not, doesn't have somebody telling it what to do, but it, it stores food up in the summer for the winter, right? So it stores food up, uh, provides, take, doing harvest time, gathers food 
in preparation for the future. So he's pointing us to the example of the ant and says, you know, learn something on the ant, how it is, you know, it is actually doing something in advance for itself. So on the one hand, uh, it seems like scripture is saying, don't worry about tomorrow, don't think about it. On the other hand, there is the example of the ant who is gathering food in the summer and during the harvest in preparation for what would come up at later. So how do we, you know, understand these things? The key is in Matthew 6, Jesus says, do not worry. He didn't say do not plan. He said do not worry. Worry is to be anxious, uh, to be overly, you know, concerned about something. <clears throat> you know, uh, in James 4, the issue is about arrogance or being self-dependent rather than being dependent on God, right? And so what we must do is we must learn uh, that planning is not wrong, but worrying is wrong. Some people, they don't plan, but they worry a lot. And that's the sin that Jesus says, you know, don't, 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 don't uh, engage in, don't engage in worry or don't engage in self-dependence. We are always dependent on God. And I like how the Apostle Paul put it in, you know, in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians. If you go with me to 2 Corinthians, it's not there on the list, but uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, um, um, uh, I just want us to look... Um, Verse 17, 2 Corinthians, 1, 2 Corinthians 1, 17. Can someone read that for us? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach uh, the good. Second, uh, second Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 1, 17. Yeah. Yes. Therefore, when I was planning this, did I do it lightly, or the things I plan? Do I plan according to the flesh, that with me there should be yes, yes, and no, no? Mm. So, Second Corinthians one seventeen, Paul is saying, look, when I am making my plan, so obviously Paul, an anointed man of God, he was planning, he was yeah, thinking ahead, what to do next, where to go next, and so on. So he was planning. And he says, the plans I plan, do I plan according to the flesh? That means, you know, I'm not dependent on the flesh to make these plans. Or if you want to uh, put it another way, you know, you and I can engage in spirit-inspired or spirit-led planning. Uh, there's nothing wrong to plan, but we can plan not just by the flesh and our natural abilities, uh, but we can plan according to the Holy Spirit. Right? And then there are these scriptures that I've listed for us from Proverbs, and uh, you'll find uh, all of these scriptures about the prudent man. A prudent man is a man who is wise and who is, let's say, very... Uh, uh, intelligent and uh, he, he, you know what in, in English we would say street smart. He's, he's very skillful uh, uh, you know, in getting things done practically. Right? And what do the scriptures say about the prudent man? You know, it says he acts with knowledge. He understands his way. He considers well his steps. He receives correction. He acquires knowledge, and he also foresees evil, right? So when you look at it, the, the Bible is telling us to be prudent, to be wise in, in a practical way in, in, in the affairs or the matters of this life. And, uh, and to be prudent means you get knowledge first, you get the information, then you act on it. You understand your way, you think deeply, you consider your steps carefully, uh, you're also willing to take correction and guidance. You're acquiring knowledge. You're foreseeing evil. You're looking up ahead and looking at uh, potential problems and pitfalls that must be avoided. So that's a prudent person. 
So what I want to present to us is, you know, as, from a biblical perspective, my understanding is uh, it is not wrong to plan. The two things we must avoid is we must avoid being worried or anxious about the future, and we must avoid being self-dependent. Instead, we need to be dependent on the Lord and be led by the Spirit in our planning. And, uh, you know, we do these practical things of getting knowledge, understanding our ways, uh, thinking well on our steps, uh, getting guidance, getting correction, uh, acquiring knowledge, and foreseeing evil as we plan, right? So uh, from a biblical perspective, we can say that it is not wrong to plan. It's not wrong to look ahead. It's not wrong to uh, get information on how how you can do something well. Now, it's not wrong to correct yourself as you are uh, going about things. Right? Uh, it's all part of being prudent and being wise in the affairs and in the matters of this life. Okay? So I just thought I'd, we'll take some time from a biblical perspective to ad address this whole thing about planning. Because sometimes you run into people who say, oh, you just let God do it and let it happen by itself or you want to plan and so on. But I think in the church, in Christian ministry, uh, if we want to do a lot of things and we want to do it well, then we definitely have to plan ahead. And that's what we're going to learn uh, practically. Right? Now, uh, today as an introduction, I just want to, you know, get us to think in terms of projects. That means uh, whatever you do, let's say you're planning to host a conference, a youth camp, a kids camp, uh, um, or it could be a special project like, uh, you know, going out to help people, um, whatever you do. And some, some of these things could be very small, like, okay, I'm just doing a, a, a one day conference and it's you know just it's a small thing or it some of these things could be um um a large projects and it could be projects that go on for a long time maybe uh you know maybe several months maybe sometimes it could uh, projects can go on for several years as well uh so regardless of you know the the, what what we are taking taking up to do, uh, you can look at it from look at them as project, like as a project. And uh, you know whether you're hosting a conference or you're doing something or as a ministry for over time, you can look at it as a project and you can apply some of these things that we know about how to plan, how to execute, and how to coordinate projects. You can, you can apply it to any of these things. So that's what we're going to learn, right? How do you run a project? How do you execute a project? Some practical things so that uh, in church ministry, church and ministry administration, you know, we can use these things. So typically, and you know, this is just a general, general information. Generally, uh, we, we say in the life cycle of a project, that means from the start to finish, that's a life cycle. Uh, from its inception to its conclusion uh, in the life cycle of a project, uh, there are these five common stages, right? So first is uh, the initiating stage where you're getting some, you're getting an idea together uh, and uh, you are defining what you want to do and you're defining your end goal. So there's an initiation stage. Uh, you're getting, sharing the idea and, you know, discussing it with people and so on. Okay, we are going to do this. Then there's a planning stage where you get into the details. Okay, this is when we are going to do it. Uh, this is how much it's going to cost. Uh, this is how we are going to carry it out. Uh, and uh, these are the people we need. And these are the maybe the equipment or the training we need. And these are how we will you know, check that we're making progress and so on. So this is a planning, right? You're, in planning, it's more on, you know, you're writing it down, you're putting it down on paper, so to speak, or you're discussing the ideas and you're, you know, you're, you're defining how you're going to go about doing something. Planning is important. 
then there's the execution. The executing part is basically you actually doing the thing, getting the things done. You know, that's when the, uh, you know, from the start of making all the arrangements for the conference, uh, the registration, the, you know, the, uh, the venue and all the details that go into making that conference happen for, as an example, or it could be a bigger project, right? So the execution is going about doing it, making it happen. And then while you are executing it, you're also monitoring it. That means you are measuring, you're watching, you know, what is happening? Is it going according to the plan? Is it happening the way it should be happening? Um, sometimes there could be some roadblocks, some uh, problems that come up. So then immediately you need to resolve the problem. So you are watching, you know, you're, you're looking at the whole project progress and um, you're also uh, uh, keeping track of what is actually happening. Then, uh, you know, you're also taking corrective action, like we said. Then finally, it comes to the closing stage. That means, okay, the conference is over or the project comes to a close. It's the end. But at the end, you are also, you know, you want to clean up everything. You want to, you know, put everything, uh, bring a, a, a proper uh, close, closure to the whole conference or the whole project. And as part of that, you also want to review and do an assessment. Okay, did we meet our objectives or where did we miss our objectives? What went wrong? How could we do things better? Uh, how can we improve? So you do, you know, you take up an assessment, you document things that uh, should be done differently uh, so that the next time around, if you're going to have the same conference again next year, or you're going to do it again in, in another city, you know, the things that you've learned from doing it once can help improve uh, the same project the next time you work on. So five simple stages, initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, closing. This is standard. It just, this is what happens uh, in a project, right? Now, uh, there are some key success factors that we must keep in mind if this project is going to be successful, you know, whatever it is, if you're going to, you're having a conference, if this conference is going to happen and it's going to happen well, or if you're going to, you know, you're doing something and, uh, you know, uh, doing a, let's say you're doing a project for you know, children in the slums, or you may be doing, you know, a project like uh, recording an album, a worship album, whatever the project is, there are certain key success factors, things that will influence or determine whether this project is going to happen well or not. And uh, we just want to outline that. What we are going to do uh, uh, as we as we continue in this lesson uh, next week, uh, not next week, on Friday, is that we will get into these, you know, what happens in each of these stages. How do you go about those stages, right? But before we get in there, we just want to outline some of the things that actually make uh, a project successful. First of all, it's very important to have a clearly defined objective, meaning what are we trying to accomplish, right? If the objective is not clearly defined and you just say, okay, let's all do something, well, uh, then people will do it, but uh, what are we trying to achieve? Nobody knows, you know? So we don't know whether we achieved it or not, whether we, uh, uh, you know, whether we did well or not. And then we have no way to uh, measure whether we were on target, whether we were, we, you know, were in the right direction, so on. So before you get a project started, one of the things is we need to have a very clearly defined objective. Uh, uh, b b during your when you're initiating the project, you have to discuss the objective. Uh, sometimes the objectives may be redefined or refined, uh, modified uh, during the discussion and so on. But at the end of it, 
everybody understands this is what we are trying to accomplish. Second very important successful success factor is a practical timeline, right? So is the timeline realistic? That means, you know, if somebody says, oh, tomorrow we're going to do a conference. Well, you can, uh, but it's not practical because, you know, we haven't done anything. We haven't prepared anything. Sure, we can, you know, just get some people together and do something, but that's that may not be um, uh, useful. It may not help us achieve, uh, you know, anything or uh, something of uh, importance there. So uh, the thing is, we have a practical timeline. That, you know, do we have enough time to plan, to prepare, uh, to put the resources together, to do whatever is needed uh, to achieve that objective? Is there enough timeline? It's got to be a practical timeline. Now, sometimes there will be, uh, what to say, uh, things we do out of, uh, in a, in, a, in a very quick way, it has to happen very fast. It's a rapid response, you know. So, uh, for example, last year, um, was it last year? Uh, let me think now. Yeah, it was last year, 2020. Um, you know, when we shut down, uh, we were forced to shut down, shut down our Bible College campus in the month of March last year. You know, when uh, the in India, when the when the when the when the, when the pandemic broke out here, uh, by March the government said, okay, everything lock, we are, we are under lockdown, everything shut down. So we just had to tell all our students, you know, please go home. Everybody has to leave. Um, we have to close campus. The government has said no hostels, no schools, no colleges, and so it was very abrupt, you know. And so we uh, had to close, and uh, and uh, we didn't know. Uh, at that time in March of last year, uh, uh, when we will be allowed to open, and and and, and so we couldn't make any decision. Then uh, uh, we just thought, okay, you know, maybe uh, things will change by June, and maybe we can tell all our students to come back uh, for fall, for August of last year. So we waited, um, April, May, June. And uh, there was no sign that, uh, you know, things were getting bad. Things were, you know, the pandemic was global. And, and there was no sign that, uh, you know, no indication that we could have our students back. Then we said, okay, what are we going to do? You know, um, we haven't finished spring 2020 semester. And um, we're getting close to fall of 2020 semester. Now, what are we going to do? And uh, how are we going to do classes? And I mean, are we going to keep Bible College closed, you know, for a long term? Or what, what are we going to do? And then in June, suddenly we said, hey, let's just do classes online. Uh, at least let's finish up uh, spring, spring uh, semester. Let's just do it online. So, you know, like uh, maybe within uh, a week or two, we just set up uh, an account on Google Classroom, informed our students, uh, you know, we are going to just do classes online till, you know, till we can all meet. And so it was, it, that, so that thing happened very fast. Like we didn't have any time to, you know, think too much on it. Uh, but the good thing is the technology, everything was there. And we checked with students and students were ready to uh, go online. And so we just started classes online with using Google uh, Classroom. Uh, and we had not done it before. Uh, this was new to us as well, but it worked out fine. We were somehow able to close, finish up spring semester. So this all happened in July last year. Many of you remember that. And then we said, uh, okay, for fall, uh, fall semester starts first Monday of August. Uh, we're going to open up admissions. So, you know, usually we start admissions in March of the year, early, early part of the year, and we start planning and we start promotions and all those things happen. We interview the students and, you know, that's how we normally do it. But now everything is moved online. So literally within three weeks, within three weeks, uh, 
we had to create a website. You know, we didn't have a website for Abba Bible College till then. So within three weeks, you know, the IT team was working many hours a day. We put up a website, we did promotions, and we did admissions, all everything online uh, you know, during the month of July. Uh, end of June, early July, and then we started promotions. And then uh, so we could admit students. And then we started class first week of August. And uh, so oh, I'm just giving that as an example where that was a situation of a rapid response. We, we didn't have much time. It was, you know, practically there wasn't like a whole lot of time to work with, uh, you know, by June, July, we had to do everything. We had to run classes for finishing spring. Uh, we had to get a website ready. We had to do online promotion. And we had to take students. We had to start class by August. And somehow it just came together and we were able to, to you know, have classes. And uh, so that's kind of how we've been going on now uh, 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 so long. With the on everything online. Uh, that so what happened is a rapid response. We had to respond to the situation, uh, but this is not how we normally work, right? Normally, you would think of a practical timeline. You would give yourself a little bit more time uh, to uh, think through on how to do the project and so on. So you would usually look for a practical timeline. And you don't want to overwork people. So, you know, I remember those, those three weeks last year when we were working many hours every day to get the website ready and launch and, you know, get all those things. But it was a short sprint. You know, it was like about a few weeks and then came the admissions and all that. Uh, but it's not something we're doing every time. It's not something we do all the time. It was just that period. Uh, Normally, you need to give yourself sufficient time uh, to get something done. Right? Another key success factor is good leadership. That means uh, the, the leader should be able to uh, inspire the people, uh, define the objective, and take the people who are working, the team of people, uh, towards the destination. So that's leadership. You're... you're, you're, you're you're, you're helping people make that journey in seeing that project happen. And leadership is important. Le good leadership is a key success factor. Um, a good team of people with the right skills and who are committed to seeing the project successful. So you need to have the right kind of people. Uh, without the right kind of people, with the right skills, it's uh, it's not going to uh, you know, make the project happen, uh, it will be very difficult. Uh, another key success factor is what we call is good management. That means uh, there's somebody who is watching over the, the, the progress, reviewing, giving feedback, making improvements as the work is being done. So you need to have good management. Uh, another key success factor would be the ability to resolve problems. Uh, in almost every project, there will be unexpected problems. Some of these could be internal, meaning uh, it could happen between people, it could be relationships, it could be uh, in terms of resources, uh, it could be in you know something unexpected happening internally. There could be also problems from the external, maybe external factors change, um, uh, you know, something unexpected happens in uh, that's 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 not part of what you are doing uh, for example if you have booked a certain venue where you want to have a conference uh, might say oh sorry uh, we have having problems and this venue was no longer available okay so that's an external problem uh, for whatever reason, that when you became un unavailable, so how do you resolve the problem? You know, you want to go ahead and have the conference, but there's a problem. The venue is not available that you've thought you were going to have. You have to quickly find a solution, right? So uh, the ability to solve problems uh, that happen, uh, 
uh, unexpected problems. And that's very important because it's very likely there will be difficulties, there will be problems, but we have to solve them and move forward, right? And finally, uh, lastly, another important success factor is there's got to be a commitment to finishing well. That means everybody must be de determined that, hey, we are going to make this happen. We want to do it well. We want to have a very good conference or uh, we want to have a very good music album that we are producing or we want to be able to really serve, uh, you know, these people that we're serving through this project. We want to do it well. There's this, there must be this commitment from the team to finish well. So this is just a little introduction today uh, on, uh, on, on, you know, projects, how to manage and run projects. Because in the local church or in the Christian ministry, the work we do, and I'm looking at it from a practical perspective, not the spiritual side, but the practical side, every work we do in our ministry, a conference, seminar, mission trip, special pro you know, special things we do. So everything can be understood or uh, thought through uh, as a project. And, and you can go through these steps and you know, okay, what is needed to make that happen well. So if we as uh, ministers, as leaders, uh, begin to handle these things that we're doing as projects and, and we know what goes into uh, doing it well, then we will be sh we can make sure that, you know, the different things that the church does, uh, the ministries, conferences, so on, all of these things will happen well. Okay. So I'm going to pause here and let's see if there are any questions, any thoughts on what we have uh, um uh, discussed or just shared so far, and um, any questions? On projects and just this introduction part. Okay, um, about us reopening the Bible College here for in-person classes, uh, we will um, uh, we will send an email out. Uh, we were just looking at, you know, how the government is deciding and uh, what what is being permitted, what's not being permitted, and so on. Uh, so uh, it seems like a, that we will uh, uh, I, we will have a discussion, and I'll, I think by the end of this week we will send an email out, but. It seems like we may open only in August next year, uh, reopen classes, in-person classes in August next year. But uh, we will have a meeting, you know, this week, uh, looking at what government is doing. And uh, because what's happened now, as the latest is, even though the government has given permission to open up classes, uh, you know, there are, Students are hesitant, teachers are hesitant. I mean, I'm not saying our teachers, I'm saying in general. Um, so we just have to be sensitive to what's happening uh, here and then uh, make a decision, right? So we will let people know uh, as soon as we have this meeting, All right? Okay, um, there are no more no questions. Uh, we will close in prayer. So what we're going to learn in the next couple of lectures is, you know, how do you run projects well? Uh, what are things you, how do you go through those five stages? What are the things you do? Uh, so that, you know, when each of you in your areas of ministry, uh, when you take up anything, you know, maybe you have to do a conference or a camp or um, something else, some other special project, you know, you'll know, okay, this is how I should start. Uh, this is how I should go about, how I should plan, how I should execute, how I should monitor, and how I should complete it, completion of the project, and what I should do during the completion stage. Uh, and so that at the end of it, we want to do things well uh, for, for God's glory and to serve people. 
Let's pray and then we will dismiss. Um, yeah, can I ask uh, maybe Dave, would you like to pray and dismiss us, please? Okay. Father, we come before you and we thank you for today's class, Lord Jesus. Thank you that we've learned so much about planning and organizing, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord God. We thank you. Let this word others be with us, Lord Jesus, so that we can uh, apply it and use it when, whenever we we need it, Lord Jesus. And I thank you. I pray for each one of us as we depart from our class, Lord Jesus. We submit the rest of the day into your hand. Whatever we do, Lord Jesus, let, the, let everything that we do bring glory to your name, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this class. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Bye. Thank you, everyone. God bless. See you again soon. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you.